Michael Kolios's ultrasound research started with a casual question from a colleague in 1994. It has come a long way since then and has helped to establish Canada as one of the world's leaders in medical imaging research. This was over a bet over beer that this whole research started. A student was giving a seminar in a graduate student seminar series and uh, one of my main collaborators at Sunnybrook Hospital, Dr. Gregory Charnada, asked the student whether you could image cell death using ultrasound. And the answer the person giving the seminar gave was no. But uh, my colleague and collaborator was not happy with that answer. So in essence, back then when we were graduate students, we started doing these kind of very fundamental experiments to see how does sound scatter off cells that are dying. Their experiments have paid off. Nearly 20 years later, their research has brought Colios here, to the Advanced Biomedical Ultrasound Laboratory at Ryerson University in Toronto, where he and his team use ultrasound imaging to look at tumors in patients suffering from cancer. Currently, we have a clinical trial looking at women with locally advanced breast cancer and trying to see if their tumors are responding to chemotherapy with ultrasound. You have treatments that, first of all, cost a lot of money. If you look at many new drugs that are being developed, the entire course of treatment could be over $100,000, right? And uh, many of these drugs have uh, pretty uh, bad side effects for the patients. But still, the patients undergo the entire cycle of chemotherapy. So if there was a method by which you could assess the efficacy of the treatment early on, uh, then theoretically you could either stop the treatment or look for a treatment that's more effective. To examine how single cells respond to a treatment, they use a device called an acoustic microscope. This unique piece of equipment has been built atop an optical microscope so that Colios's graduate students can observe the ultrasound process in real time and has been enclosed in a case to maximize the accuracy of their data. We're looking at how the properties of cells change after we expose them to a chemotherapeutic drug. And that takes days, right? So we want to see over 24 hours, 72 hours, how do the acoustic properties of that cell change? Now, it turns out, no matter how hard we try to keep the temperature of the room constant, it fluctuates. So we had to build this entire thing, uh, enclosure, to keep the temperature to 0 0.01 degrees over 72 hours. The acoustic microscope is also coupled with a laser fiber to allow researchers to examine changes in blood cells through photoacoustic imaging. Photoacoustic imaging is the process of focusing light on specific cells, much like a magnifying glass, and collecting the sound signals that they produce to create a high resolution image of those cells. Colios likens photoacoustics to a thunderstorm. After lightning strikes, the area around that light heats up and expands, emitting pressure waves, which we detect as the sound of thunder. This innovative imaging method is used to observe the content and oxygenation status of blood cells. And in fact, what the graduate students are doing now is they're looking at blood and how when red blood cells aggregate or clump together, does that change the photoacoustic signals? Because we hope to be able one day to use that information to look at blood disorders non-invasively. That day may soon be here. In a recent article published in Scientific American, Colios explains that his lab's acoustic microscope can see red blood cells with greater detail than ever before. If they can quickly identify irregularly shaped blood cells, they might be able to detect blood disorders and cancer in patients early on. This will allow doctors to make quicker diagnosis and more informed decisions about treatment and save patients from unnecessarily undergoing the painful and costly process of chemotherapy.